Hey everybody, Neo Flynn here, and it is sports shorts time once again. A um, couple things I wanted to touch on uh, before we get into the picks for this week. Uh, first off, um, if you guys missed it last night in the playoffs, uh, Roy Halladay for the Philadelphia Phillies um, in the first game that he's ever pitched in the postseason came up clutch as clutch can be and threw a no-hitter in his first ever playoff start. And to give you an idea of how rare a no-hitter in the playoffs is, that's only the second time ever that a no-hitter's been thrown in the playoffs. The other one um, was 50-some odd years ago, and I don't remember the pitcher's name off the top of my head. Um, they were talking about it on the radio, and I, well, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, and that one actually happened in the World Series, so that's even more rare. But yeah, Roy Halladay, every, you know, everybody knew he was good anyway, and it was like, okay, what's he going to do in his first playoff start? Obviously, he's not going to suddenly forget how to pitch. He's one of the best pitchers in the league. But to come up as big as that and throw a no-hitter, in fact, it was nearly a perfect game, except he walked one guy in the fifth inning, um, is pretty darn impressive. Now, I'm not a, f a fan of the Phillies at all, mind you, um, but you got to give credit where credit's due, and that's... That is pretty darn clutch. Um, as far as my playoff picks are looking so far, they're not looking so good. <laughs> uh, as Tampa Bay lost yesterday. If, if Tampa Bay was going to lose a game, it was going to be that first one with Cliff Lee going for Texas. Um, and Cliff Lee got out of a jam in that first inning, and after that it was all she wrote. Um, and then the Yankees looked like maybe it was going to go my way and Minnesota was going to pull off the victory, but the Yankees do what the Yankees do, and they came in and... You know, they took the lead, Mariano came in in the 8th inning, got the got the ground ball to preserve the lead for the Yankees, and broke three bats in the ninth inning to seal the deal, so, and, um, in the other game, uh, what was the other one that they played yesterday? No, that's it, yeah, the Rays, Twins, and I already talked about the Phillies and the Reds, um, so, yeah, playoffs so far. I mean, it's only one game in most of the series, and the other series hasn't even started yet. Um, but we'll see what happens so far. Not, things are not breaking my way. Uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about, and this is jumping over to football for a second, is the Patriots and Randy Moss and their decision to trade him for a third-round pick. It's almost mind-boggling to me. Yeah, Randy Moss is, is getting older. He may have lost a step, and for whatever reason, it appears that it is not working in New England anymore for him. Uh, you know, he popped off at the mouth after that first game about his contract, and they just haven't seen eye to eye since then. But for them, you know, in the middle of the season, to just basically ship him off to get rid of him, as the dog decides to squeak some more, um, ship him off to get rid of him for a third-round pick. And, you know, Patriots are... It's the Patriot way. If you rock the boat, then you get thrown off the boat, basically. Um... And it'll be interesting to see. He goes back to his old team, the team he originally played for in Minnesota, which I'm sure makes Brett Favre happy. You know, they're decimated at receiver this year, so he finally has somebody, you know, that he can throw to. And I, I want to say that first play in their game this week is going to be a bomb to Randy Moss. You know, he's just going to bust it off the line, break somebody, and Brett Favre is just going to chuck it as far as he can, and Randy Moss is going to go catch it. And it's going to be, you know... a happily ever after after that, but we'll see. Um, so just a couple things I wanted to touch on there real quick, give you my thoughts. Um, yeah, the Patriots do what the Patriots do, but we'll see how this one works out for them. Um, so on to the picks. Uh, we will review last week. Um, did not have a great week. Went 500. 2-2 two two in college and 2-2 two two in the NFL. Um, Stanford and Oregon. Somebody called me out on that one and was like, oh, Oregon's going to whoop them, and sure enough, Oregon did. I thought Stanford had a chance, and it was looking good for the first half, and then after that, Oregon just took control. Um, but they also said that they would, that Oregon would jump to number two in the polls, and I said, there's no way that's going to happen. And, of course, that didn't happen. Until Alabama or Ohio State lose, they're not going anywhere. You know, Oregon can do everything, and it's not going to matter, as the dog decides he wants to get in on this video. Uh, second game was Clemson at Miami. It was looking good there for a minute again, but Miami pulled it out. Uh, the two I got right, FSU over Virginia, they destroyed them. And Notre Dame and Boston College. Um, Notre Dame got the big victory in that one. 
Uh, and in the NFL, we had Baltimore over Pittsburgh. I told you guys Pittsburgh was going to lose one somewhere, and sure enough, Baltimore got the job done. Uh, missed Cincinnati at Cleveland. I don't know what happened in that one. Cincinnati just did not look good at all. Um, Vader, get down. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Cincinnati did not look, look good in that one, and Cleveland got the upset. Um, San Francisco at Atlanta. Um, actually, Atlanta won the game, but they missed the spread, so I missed that one. That was that was just an ugly game um, until the very end. What are a couple of nice plays? Uh, and then New England at Miami on Monday night. New England throttled them. They were only a one-point favorite, um, but they just throttled them. So that is the review. So like I said. Four and four last week, and that gives us nine and seven total for the season so far. Moving on to this week's picks. Um, once again, as always, four in the college, four in the four in the pros. Um, and I'll start a new feature, which is my ATM lock of the week. Automatic touchdown, or not touchdown, automatic teller machine. Take it to the bank, and cash it out, uh, and that'll be coming up in a little bit. But first, let's start with the college. Tennessee at Georgia. Georgia favorite by 11 and a half. Don't ask me why. Granted, Tennessee has not looked all that great this season. My only fear in this one is that Tennessee, if you guys saw the Tennessee LSU game, what a debacle that was at the end of that game. It looked like they had won, but they had it wound up being 13 guys on the field in a play that it wouldn't have mattered if they had one guy on the field because uh, <laughs> it snapped it over the guy's head. And time ran out, but because of that penalty they get one on time down and of course LSU punches it in and they steal steal victory from the jaws of defeat so that's my only fear in this one is that Tennessee is going to be you know a little heartbroken after that one and not going to show up to play but Georgia has looked awful um they lost to Colorado last week uh they're 0-3 in the SEC and yet somehow they're favored in this game so I like to I don't know if Tennessee will win but I think it'll be close um, so I like Tennessee to cover the 11.5 point spread. Uh, next up, Utah going to Iowa State. Um, when I'm not cheering for Nebraska, I'm cheering for Utah. That's where I'm from. Um, and they are six point favorites going to Iowa State. Iowa State, bottom, you know, bottom rung of the Big 12. Um, but it's good to see Utah step out and play somebody from the Big 12, even if it is a lesser team. Um, and Utah's getting the six points. I like them to cover that one. I think they're a much better team than Iowa State, um, and I think it'll play out that way. Uh, next up, FSU, Florida State going to Miami. FSU, the six-point favorite in that one. Or excuse me, the six-point dog in that one. Um, both teams have looked really good this year, and it's always a tough game. Um, but I like FSU to win outright, so I think they will cover uh, the six-point spread. And uh, last but not least, uh, UCLA at Cal. UCLA, a 7.5 point dog um, at Cal. If they can play like they did against Texas, um, they could beat anybody. So I'm going to take them to cover that one as well. I, I guess, again, that's one I don't know if they'll win outright, but I like them to cover. I think it'll be close. Um, moving on to the pros, we got Jacksonville at Buffalo. Jacksonville, only a one point favorite. They looked really good against Indianapolis pulling that one out and why they're only getting one point against Buffalo I don't really know but Buffalo is not that good um, so I'm going to take Jacksonville to win that one uh, next up St. Louis at Detroit you got a 2-2 two two St. Louis team that has looked good the last two weeks going into Detroit an 0-4 team and inexplicably Detroit is a three point favorite so this is going to be the ATM lock uh, go to the ATM pull your money out and put it on this one because I don't see any way that St. Louis can lose that game. Um, so, picking St. Louis to win outright, at least cover the three, if nothing else. Uh, next up, Philadelphia at San Francisco. Once again, San Francisco is a three-point favorite at home. Um, I almost picked them to cover against Atlanta last week, and I should have, because they did. Um, I thought Atlanta would win the game, but, you know, San Francisco kept it close. They, at, they're they a much better team at home. They almost beat New Orleans at home. Philadelphia, I'm, it doesn't sound like they're going to get Michael Vick this week, so I am going to take San Francisco minus the three. 
um, at home. I think they'll get their first win of the season. Hopefully it pans out. Philadelphia with Kevin Cobb is not the same team as Philadelphia with Mike Vick. So let's hope that Kevin Cobb starts that one and we get the win there. And last but not least, the hometown Atlanta Falcons going on the road to Cleveland, who always plays them tough, but Atlanta is getting three points in that one. I like them as a touchdown favorite. Um, Atlanta is much improved on defense this year, and their offense just is looking really good. So I, But if Cleveland plays like they did against Cincinnati, who knows? I think that was more on Cincinnati's part than Cleveland's part, but I'd like Atlanta to cover the three points. So there you go. Uh, just to review real quick, Tennessee plus 11.5. Against Georgia, Utah, minus the 6 at Iowa State. FSU, plus the 6 at Miami. And UCLA, plus the 7.5 at Cal. And interesting that I picked all the road teams uh, in my four college games. Kind of funny there. And in the pros, we got Jacksonville, minus the 1 at Buffalo. St. Louis, plus the 3 at Detroit. That's your ATM pick of the week. Uh, Philadelphia at San Francisco, San Francisco minus the three, and Atlanta minus the three at Cleveland. So there you go, guys. Uh, be sure and check back Thursday, see how we did, and hope you guys are enjoying watching, and leave my comments, let me know what you think of my picks, and we'll see you next week.